Wake up. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. That's actually a really, really good stop, actually. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And welcome to the Sports Dynasty NFL. My name is Trevor, and this is Juan. Take two. Take two, better way, because, you know, technical difficulties the first time. Um, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Um, join the Facebook group. I know it's cold out there if you live in the Northeast area. It's really cold. Um, it's brick if, ass. If you lived in the Western... I thought I was going to have frostbite outside. If you lived in Western New York, in the Buffalo area, you are snowed in. But that shouldn't stop you from doing all that. Always like, share, subscribe. Be a part of the conversation. It's free. It is free. You know what else is free? I don't know. I have something for it, but I screwed it up. But anyway. This dude. Yeah. How are you going to start a joke and then just abandon it? Yeah. I, I didn't have it today. Um, well, no stand-up comedy for you? I, 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 I don't want to say I'm stand-up comedy, but, you know, I do have some punchlines there and there. But, you know. I don't think you should do that at all. Oh, no. I don't, I don't want to do that. scary. That's scary. They'll boo me. Yeah. They're going to throw tomatoes <laughs> at you, yes. <laughs> just like how they're throwing tomatoes at Zach Wilson. Yes. Tomatoes. You know, if, if, especially in New York, in New York City, the Apollo of New York City, where the Sandman sweeps you out of the stage when you, when you horrible on stage, and that's what the, they want to do to Zach Wilson because he was absolutely dreadful. And you know what's worse? Not only that is he not a good NFL QB, but as far as character is concerned, the lack of accountability to me, if you lack accountability to me, I feel like you're just – not worth someone I want to be around. Like I don't think I want to be around you because you're just, just as it's, it's, it's horrible. Because what happened yesterday was nothing short of a, a complete failure. The New York Jets came into Foxborough to play the New England Patriots, and the and the Jets defense only allowed three points, three points, and they still lost. Not because. They lost because of, of Marquise, Marcus Jones' um 80 yard um um return for touchdown to end the game with five seconds left. But the mere fact that Zach Wilson was they lost the game because Zach Wilson was this bad. He was dreadful. Did you, did you know the Jets had more punts than he had completions? Yeah. Nine completions to ten punts. Yeah, I knew that. Did you know in the second half that they only allowed. They only um, had two point seven inches per play in the second half. I did not know that. I mean, Instagram told us that, but uh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. It's 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 saying a lot. I, I, we say all the time. Let's be real here. The New York Jets. That defense is legit. They are very good, very very ferocious to watch, and very stingy too. Like they they go after the quarterback. You have Quentin Williams, Quincy Williams. Going after the quarterbacks, going after the quarterback, which is incredible. You have Sauce Gardner completely shutting down um, um, opposing receivers. Very, very fun to watch. And I, I love defense. Very fun to watch. They are legit. They are for real. Especially with how hard the schedule was this year, they have completely did what they had to do, and they look great doing it. Yeah, they're ahead of schedule. They're very ahead of schedule. And, and Joe Douglas needs – Joe Douglas, for the most part, did a great job constructing this, but there is one blemish on his GM resume, and that is Zach Wilson. This is your guy you pick. This is the guy you felt that in BYU he was the guy you want to take to take the next step with. Oh, we were a quarterback away, and after two seasons, you're still a quarterback away. Yes, he sucks. He's he is not good. He is not good. The fact that the, to me the best of the best ability is availability, and when he's on the he's, and he's when he's on the field, he's bad. But a lot of times he's off the field because he's always getting hurt, always getting injured. Just like I think we get a, I think we have enough sample size that he's not the guy, and I think they realize it too. Not only did their fan base realize it now, but their organization realizes it here. This is really bad. Like honestly, all honesty, Joe Flacco, who again we. Bash big fun him all the time. A competent, a a decent veteran quarterback would have won those games against the New England Patriots. Because let's be honest, Patriots should have lost both of those games. In the first game, if it weren't for a penalty that negated a pick six by Mac Jones in the first game, they go 17 to 3 a half, and they probably win the game. They probably win the game. This game, 
and the game that happened last night, that happened um, yesterday afternoon, was so poorly, just so poorly. Um, Zach Wilson was so bad that they literally cost him. He literally cost him the game. He was by far the worst person on the, on the on the field that day. Yeah, when you you know miss open receivers down in the middle of the field, when you overthrow three behind the line of scrimmage flat routes, <laughs> they're standing there wide open, buck naked, and you overthrow three of them. When you run around, act when you're running around in peril, and instead of you know being a smart quarterback and um hitting people right in front of you, you want to make big plays and miss people wide open down the field. Yeah, that's the quarterback that we're talking about. Just stupid mistakes that shouldn't happen in the NFL level. He makes them consistently, and I believe as we're seeing, since you know his teammates hate him. Oh yeah. What right now is the lack of self awareness, uh, which and we're gonna go into real life right now. Now forget sports and all that shit. We're talking about real life. We're gonna give you some Professor Juan wisdom right now. Mm. Self awareness to me is an extremely valuable trait in life. If you lack self awareness, you have a very high chance of being a complete failure. It's just that simple. Self-awareness makes you better. Self-awareness makes you likable. Self-awareness makes you coachable. And guess at this point, guess what Zach Wilson isn't? Self-aware. Yes. The fact that, oh, I am getting a call from Scam Likely. Um, I think we all get those once a day. I haven't had this in a while, though, so I had a nice streak. Excuse me, my bad. <clears throat> So in his little press conference yesterday, when they asked him, do you think he played a factor in letting the defense down? He just went and said, no, and turned his head and didn't say anything. Didn't offer an explanation, didn't elaborate, didn't clear up anything what he meant. He just said, no, and that's it. And That's, that's a huge red flag. Yes, and that pissed not only his locker room off. that They, were, they, they pissed him them off really bad. But you're pissed off New York City as a whole, Jet fans who live in the New York Metropolitan. They, you, pissed, you managed to piss them off. Because we live in New York City our whole lives. Our city was built on, you know, us appreciating the blue-collar guy, someone who's going to do the, all the dirty work, who's going to put the, everything on his back. Because I feel like if you can live in New York City, you can live anywhere. So being able to have that, that, that tough demeanor saying, yeah, I got this, don't worry about it, I got this. And that showed that you lack accountability, that you don't, that you, that it's all about you. That's saying that, oh, as long as I'm getting my things, I don't care. Everything like, and, and Jeff fans did not like that, especially his his teammates. Uh, um, Elijah Moore was asked by a reporter saying, hey, how do you feel about the, how do you feel about the chemistry you have with Zach Wilson? And he was trying to go with the diplomatic answer, but he said, screw it. Like, I don't have, I don't know about our chemistry. I don't get the ball. This is the same man who won the trade from the Jets. And I wonder why. Mm-hmm. Elijah Moore's pretty good. Elijah Moore's a pretty decent receiver. I he had a good year last year. He had a great year last year. I wonder why he wants to leave so want to leave so bad. Garrett Wilson looked visually frustrated in that game against when he when he missed them on the I think it was it, it, it might have been a screen, a screenplay. So my screenplay missed him. Yeah, he ran, that's one of the, the, the plays I was talking about. Ran over his head. Missed him. He he looked visibly frustrated. Say, Yo, bro, what are you doing? He also missed him on a on a deep go route on the right hand uh on the right hand sideline. Oh yeah, he missed him in a deep go route, and he underthrew the life out of him, and he couldn't. And that Garrett couldn't come back and get the ball. Yeah, that happened. Missed him real bad. He was open. There were at least two interceptions he could have thrown, but dropped the interceptions. But uh, we'll get to the Patriots in a second. But it just shows that. The fact that the defense can only, can allow only three points, they did everything they could have did. You couldn't have asked the defense to do any more what they did. It just quartered the court. Jack Wilson cost him this game. Yeah, he when was, he goes nine for twenty two, he got took four sacks. I think two of them were his fault. The leading receiver was Denzel Mims. Did that one tell you what's up? Yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for that defense, man. Defense kick is kicks ass for no reason at this for what? rate. For no reason. And, and the thing is, like, oh, but but Trevor, they won. The Jets have won. The six, they, they won six games. They, have, they wouldn't even sniff six games in the last couple of years. You're right. You're perfectly right, which makes this even more egregious than the fact that 
You're six and four. You're in a you're in the playoff position right now. And the fact that your quarterback is literally holding them back. They're holding the team back. And don't really and they know it. We usually have a three year rule of, you know, after three years, if they haven't improved by three years, then we kind of get what we know with them. I think we have a set. I think we're safe to say that he's not getting any better than this. He's not it. He's not, he's not it. This is bad. The Jets, I mean, obviously, I mean, you can't cut him yet. You can't get rid of him yet. But you can definitely tell him, say, yo, I'm going to get a, a veteran, a veteran QB coming here and do what we got to do. Now, if I'm the Jets, if I'm, I'm smart, but, but the Jets – I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to disrespect Joe Douglas because he's did a great job for the last couple of years at GM. I don't want to disrespect him. So I'm not going to. If I'm him, I'm getting somebody a veteran to challenge him, like a Tyler he- Taylor Heineke. When he when I, I'm not pretty sure the the Commanders haven't signed him to a long term contract. I'm pretty sure they haven't. So I'm looking at him. I'm pre- Daniel Jones is still will be a free agent next year, and they haven't, you know, committed to him yet either. So. If he's available, I don't know, maybe Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones is not a bad quarterback. Yesterday he was. I mean, yesterday, I mean, his receivers are god-awful. But Daniel Jones on his Jet team, whew, that's pretty good. Pretty good. But I, we'll see about that. But Now for the Patriots. The New England Patriots. Um, the defense was the defense was stellar, obviously. Um, Dietrich Wise and, and Matthew Juna was, were incredible. Rushing the quarterback, they pressuring him, getting to him. They did they, they did their jobs. Um, corners, they played well. You didn't see their numbers. Except for except for Miles Bryant. He's 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 just a disgrace. I know. But you know, for I'm the most so part, damn sick and tired of him. But the defense played well enough, played the well enough to make it, you know, the whole Absolutely. They yeah, they I'm looking through the numbers now. Absolutely. Mac Wilson. Actually showed up pretty well in this game, shooting up the gaps very well. Uh, got oh, he, I, he's the one that almost killed Zach Wilson, right? He like need him in a face accidentally during a sack during a blitz of the A gap. Him, I said Kyle Duggar almost got a fumble, almost got one late in the fourth quarter. It was such a good blitz package from by the Pages. Pages really went out all the stops and made sure that they made Zach Wilson's life a living hell. And he said uh, Wise was the one to me that jumped out the screen more than anybody. Since uh, Judah was getting extra um, attention from the Jets' offensive line, Dietrich Wise did what every other guy's supposed to do. When you got a star, get taking all the attention is up to you to win your one-on-one battles. And Dietrich Wise jumped off the screen on a run and pass game. Very, very good. This Patriots front man, I mean the defensive line for pass rushing at least. They play- yeah, but guess what? They also did well yesterday. They absolutely clogged up the run yesterday. It was great. Only allowed fifty-nine rushing yards yesterday. Amazing, amazing the defense. There's nothing more I can really say about them, and they're, they're, they're beautiful. Now, on the other side of the ball, yeah, that Ugh. Mac Jones will get a pass to, from us today. He put this is what this was his best game this season, yeah, by, by far. Mind. By my, he was he was he was making he was taking what the defense was giving him, taking advantage of it, and he played very well. Make some throws, man. Now it didn't help that his offensive line, that the offensive line is literally in shambles. Yep, David and David Andrews um, probably like, out for the year. Probably out for the year. I think it might be. A, it looked like a torn. A torn. It might be a quad. A it quad has injury. to be. We'll see it within the next three days, but it's looking unlikely he's back for the season. Yeah. So but they said a thigh injury. If it's a thigh injury, that means it's something with a quadricep. So, so it's kind of scary. So hopefully he's okay. But that was a that was a huge loss for the for that for the offense. They sacked Mac Jones six times. Yep. I guess a very very good Jets front that spells disaster. But it didn't mean much because on the other side of their ball, their quarterback is terrible. And another thing that bothered me about this Patriot game, especially with the Patriots itself, the play calling was absolutely horrible. Horrible. Yeah, so the point when if they decide to go for it on fourth down, I, I just assume the defense come back on the ball because their big calling is egregious. Like, for instance, one of their fourth down calls was just a freaking sw- uh, a sw- – that wasn't a sweep. It was a toss to Ramondre Stevenson down at the red zone when everybody and their mother knew that was going to happen. Yeah. That's the problem with them. at This this game, at least, they're too damn predictable. A lot of third down calls where they just ran up the gut. It's like, dude, 
when your quarterback is actually playing well for once, why don't why aren't they giving the quarterback the ball? I agree. Like they, they did not use Mac when they should have. He actually played well for once. Give him the football. Let him throw the football. I understand the line is good, but if the line isn't good, then why are you running up the gut? Isn't that the worst thing that you do? Exactly. <laughs> like, Again, against a very, very good Jets front. Like, <laughs> they, stood, they stood that shit a mile away. Yes. Special teams. Thank God for Michael Pilardi. Because it's like a breath of fresh air, especially with punting alone. <laughs> like, to me, it was like, like the, his first punt, his first punt, I'm like, oh, well, he's, he's very better than Jake Bailey already. Yep. By, by far. Yeah. So goodbye. All his punts went somewhere. Yes. I did. They did a really good job pinning pinning them into. And this is why I knew the, the Patriots would be okay. But they kept pinning the Jets deep in their territory, or at least in the time of twenty. Instead of twenty, I'm like, oh, well, not gonna do anything anyway. They're not, they're not making it past midfield. I think I think they made it past midfield like literally once. Yeah, once because they got the three. Other than that, they haven't made it past the past the fifty yard line, or worse. And that might have been one of the drives where um the Patriots got stalled inside their own ten, so the ball didn't go very far. So the Jets didn't have very far to go. No, I'm lying. I know what drive it was. It was the drive where um Denzel Mims broke open deep early in the early in the, in the second quarter. Sometime, remember for the, when he got the 34 yard reception? That yeah. was when they got the field goal. That was it. That was when they went down. That was it. So not so I lied. My bad. Yeah, but the older overall, um, you look at Nick Folk. This Nick Folk didn't have a great game, and I, and I get what Belichick was going after the second miss. The first miss, the first one was Nick Folk. The wind was just, this so scorching, like the wind was just not let him go anywhere. Second one, he just shanked it, and I think he's all right. He missed two, he missed, he had three kicks, missed two. One of them was completely agreed as you know what? All right, he, right, he doesn't have it today. I'm gonna respect that, but the fourth down play calling was horrible, like really, really bad. Yeah, third and fourth downs was bad, absolutely egregiously bad in this game, and more coaching woes for the New England Patriots on the offensive side of the ball. I can't believe that's what they came up with after a bye. That. I I truly believe that they were saying that, oh, the defense is going to carry us, whatever, 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 so it doesn't matter. And they counted on the fact that Zach Wilson is horrible. Any decent QB, any slightly decent QB, excuse me, would have took advantage and Patriots would have lost this game. Patriots would have lost this game. They should have lost the last two against, against the Jets. Now they have a 14 game winning streak against the Jets. Seven years. And I don't know Jeff fans is probably saying that, yo, we keep losing no matter how things change, a lot stay the same. How you lose to a punt return? <laughs> a game winning punt return. <laughs> oh uh, my god. Yeah, he is. got injured. That's why he was ninja for like half the game. He got injured. Then he came back and won. The Patriots Twitter, Twitter, um, the Patriots Twitter <laughs> uh, handlers, those got hilarious. So before the game, they're saying that, oh, that he's questionable to return. And then they retweeted that same tweet. He said, he returned. Ball game. He returned ball <laughs> game. Like, that's it. He came I, back and won I the was game. Like, I was like, that was brilliant. That was brilliant stuff. Uh, so what's next for these teams? So New England has to go against the Minnesota Vikings on primetime Thanksgiving. So they have an advantage because of Kirk Cousins in primetime. Yes. Lucky them. Lucky them. Um, but playing offense like that, they will get slapped. However, the Minnesota defense is not as good as the Jets defense. So they may be able to run the football a bit, and they may be able to calm down and play the offense that they would like to play against Minnesota. So they have an okay matchup. On the other side of the ball, the New England Patriots pass rush, as the, this might be the best pass rush New England has ever had in the Belichick era. So going against – uh. A offensive line woes uh, version of the Minnesota Vikings, as you saw in that Dallas game we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, the New England Patriots can deliver pass rush just like that. So, um, good luck. I don't know who's going to win. We'll talk about that in the next episode. In the next episode with Wednesday, whatever it is, before. Um, yeah, our episode should be going up Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, uh, before Thanksgiving. So, um, we'll I'll talk let... about that then. Yeah. But it's a good matchup for New England, but we'll see who wins. On the Jets side of the ball, I don't remember who they play. I'll tell you in about 10 seconds, nine. The Bears. I like in two seconds. They play Chicago. Ugh. Um Okay. I'm I actually go. like the Jets' chances in that game. So I do too. I like the, like the chances in that game. Their too. defense is very good. I think they'll be fine. But, but quarterback play. 
again, but lucky them, the, the Bears defense is absolute god awful doo doo. So the, I think the Jets will have no, a make I'm, right game. I'm saying I, I agree with you. 100 percent agree with you. I'm telling you, if he struggles against Chicago. Oh, we're gonna have a lot of fun next. Oh, it's gonna be great. He may have he, I think he lost the locker room. I you have to think already. I think he lost it already. To me. No, no, I, I mean I, he, he lost it already. I'm talking about as far as like you make a change at quarterback then saying no 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 no. Chicago defense is absolute dog shit. Mm-hmm. Absolute dogs, mm-hmm. but they can score points like crazy. And I don't think I don't see that happening against the Jets defense. But if they struggle, if Zach Wilson struggles against this this defense, yeah, you have to do something. Yeah, that's not bad. So that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. All right, let's go through rapid fire with some of these games outright. So like the Commanders, for example, they beat the ever loving crap out of the Texans on the road, win by thirteen points. Um, the game began with a pick six, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the Texans had only five yards of total offense in the first half. They did. It. Yeah, that's all we need to say. This Washington defense is actually actually sensational now, especially up front. I guess it's now that they don't even have Chase Young back yet, and they're really they're ferocious up front. Um, that's interesting. They play against Atlanta this week coming up, so that's going to be fun to watch. Of uh, the Texans, I, I don't know when the hell they're going to win a game. I know they're not going to end one fifteen and one. They're going to win one more game. I just don't know when. I thought they had a chance. No, so it, it'll happen. Well, you know, when Davis Mills is playing like that, it's kind of hard for it to happen. But they're going to win. I don't know when. I'll figure it out. They'll win. I just see this schedule again. Yeah, I'm going to do that. We're going to do that in the next episode. We're going to figure it out. <laughs> yes. We're going to do that. Oh, okay. Um, Rams and Saints. I'd be surprised the Rams put up 20 points to begin with, to be 100% honest. Uh, but the Saints, uh, the roller coaster Saints, we got the King the Car version of the Saints when they actually kind of beat the crap out of the Rams. It wasn't actually King the Car is crazy because literally they go up and they come down. That's it. So I'm waiting for them to come down. It's like when you rise. Anybody who's been to Six Flags going to King the Car, it takes like 10 minutes for them to go up and then it takes five seconds to go. Well, we're waiting for that to happen because that's how they've been playing all year. But they got they got the rise up version of the Saints. And Olave just sensational. I freaking love that guy, man. Yeah. So good. Um the Rams are up to fire. They're, they're done. They're done. That's it. They're talking about Cooper Cup has and a chance to make it. And screw them because they cost me my card yesterday. They screw did get sorry, bro. Sorry, man. Oh, uh, Panthers and Ravens. So that game was very interesting. Well, when you play against Baker Mayfield, um, I guess you have time to not score points until you feel like it later on in the fourth quarter with because Lamar Jackson running in for the touchdown to finally see the game away. Because, you know, you're playing Baker Mayfield. Yeah, he sucks. That's it. Uh, okay, what else we got? A couple more. Uh, the Raiders and Broncos game. Uh, <laughs> the Broncos got swept by the Raiders. It happened. The Raiders have three wins, and two of them came from Denver. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't deserve anything. All we know is that the, that there was a Nathaniel Hackett mess up late in the game. His clock oh. management was really bad and gave the Raiders enough time to gather themselves. And get their field goal to force overtime. Why is uh, it? No, no, no. I'm gonna be real with you. The fact that this new leader, this new management leadership, has a lot of money. They are like loaded with cash, yeah. so they can literally just cut him and make screw him. We'll pay the difference because he's so bad. Mm-hmm. But there's no way he's going to survive this uh, next year. After the season, he's done. It's I will be shot if they allow him to come back next year. I'll be upset. I'll be very shocked. Because these players don't deserve it. They don't deserve like that. They don't. That defense doesn't that the defense one of the best defenses in the league don't deserve it. Zach, Zach Wilson was hard. And then Zach Wilson. Well, well, I mean, I mean Wilson. all Wilsons apparently are trash. Yes. Oh, Wilson was awful in this game. Awful. No. Sorry. Well, he's awful like he always is, you know. And uh what was I gonna say? Oh, the Cowboys coming into Minnesota and absolutely beating the ever loving crap out of Minnesota. Oh my god, it was a massacre. It wasn't even close, dude. Well, I believe seven sacks were made by Dallas in this game. Which was which was was Corey Cousins career high taking yeah, sack taking. It, it was really, really bad. Um, okay, so I didn't see this beating coming. I saw the win coming for Dallas aside, but keep this into perspective. Dallas just came off a very embarrassing loss at Green Bay, where they were up 14 points in the fourth quarter and just choked against Aaron Rodgers, who got his who's done got his ass whooped <laughs> by Tennessee that Thursday. So we know Green Bay sucks. So they came off of that loss, okay, where they got ran on 
by the Green Bay Packers, got out toughed, out physical in the fourth quarter to lose the game. So they're already embarrassed and upset and had to deal with media talking ish about them all week. Then they're coming into a game against the Minnesota team who had their most biggest and emotional win in a very long time in that Buffalo game. Has some of the best plays they can possibly muster coming in. And uh, they're riding high, but you're going against a team who's emotionally drained versus a team who's angry. This result usually takes place. So I'm now looking back at it and thinking about it, plus the biggest factor of the Vikings losing is Christian Darisol being going down before the game and he didn't play. Their offensive line was already not very good, but having their best lineman by far not play against Micah Parsons and company is just a recipe for destruction. And you and saw it saw full-fledged atom bomb destruction at Minnesota. It was real bad. So we'll see if Minnesota can bounce back against the Patriots this Thursday night. Uh, and Dallas themselves have a big game against the New York Giants. Before that game, which we'll talk about right now, the Giants got their ass beat against the Detroit Lions. They got absolutely physical, out physical by the Detroit Lions. Um, Jamal Williams thing ran for about three touchdowns, three or four touchdowns against them. It was it, it, it was no shot, and then Dan just like shit because you know, yeah, who the hell he's throwing to? So another non-football reason for this to be the way it went. I personally believe the New York Giants looked ahead and just looked past the Lions because they have a massive game against Dallas that they have to win to be taken seriously and to be continue to be in playoff contention. They must beat Dallas this Thursday. I think they looked ahead of, of Detroit because, you know, Detroit is garbage. And they said, screw it, I, I, I'm looking at Dallas. And then Detroit said, excuse me, we're an NFL team too. And they beat the shit out of them. I think that's what happened. I, you mentioned he took it seriously. I was like, I was like, really iffy with them. Last yeah, week. you were on the train that Detroit was, was going to win all week, though. I was saying, yeah, Detroit's going to win this game because I, I, the way they played against Houston last week, I'm like, yo, they could look to game two, but they, but the way they lost to the Lions, to me, I don't take them seriously now. To me personally, I listen I, now, I don't take them seriously, even though I haven't made the playoffs, even they make the playoffs, which is very doubtful at this point, honestly speaking. Mm. The schedule gets harder. Yeah, it does. They still have Minnesota. They still have to play Dallas. They have to play Dallas again. You got Dallas, Philly twice. Philly twice, and Washington Philly twice, and Washington, tw- and Washington twice. And you have Indianapolis, which Indianapolis will get to them in the second two. But, Literally next, we're gonna get to no. No, I'm lying. One more game. We we'll get to them later, but to me, it's like, ugh, I can't take this seriously now because the way that Dallas played in that game against a game that they needed against Minnesota, they're gonna take it out on you guys. Yeah, I, I I don't I don't see the Giants winning that game on yeah. on, on Thursday on Thursday either on Thanksgiving either. Yeah. I don't see that happening. I've so so, so, you, so you looked ahead to Dallas to another be. I, I'd be shocked if they win. I'd be shocked. If they I'd be win. shocked. I'd be happy for them, but I'd, I'd be, be shocked for them because too. They, to me their season is still alive. But they need this game against Dallas because to me, if they don't, their season is in dire jeopardy. It's just in jeopardy. Yeah, it's tough. The division is too good. The yeah. NFC East, the both East, AFC and NFC East yeah. is great. The NFC East is really good, man. <laughs> really good. Um, Bears and Falcons. We'll go through that one real quick. Just a fun game for everybody to see. Um, to be a hundred percent honest, we had it in the things, but I was looking the three games I was looking at the most was the New England Patriots game, the Buffalo Bills game a bit, and the Philly game, which we can talk about. That's coming up next. Those are the three games I looked at the most in the one o'clock hour. This game was, I was glancing. I saw some plays being made, but I didn't care because I don't take any of the teams very seriously. So I don't really give a rat's ass. So I don't know. Trevor has anything to say about this game. Chicago I don't got to say anything, but I don't care. Another one, get away from the, like, ours, Justin Fields. Justin Fields has been dynamic. Well, they, they, the offense, offensively, they've been playing very yeah. well. As a team, they always rush for like a buck fifty or more. Yeah, every game. Ever, always, ever since the Patriot game on Monday Night Football a couple of weeks ago, they came into that game as one of the worst offenses in the league. And now, in that span, they're one of the best offenses in the league. Just the defense is awful, but they found a way to lose another game like this. This was a game they, they should have won, but unfortunately, couldn't. No cigar. Mm-hmm. You know, they were able to. They, it wasn't enough at the end of the day. Kyle Pitts was actually good. He looked all right until he got knocked out, but he was pretty decent. But yeah, that was again. I needed this window. But anyway, all right. So Philadelphia at Indianapolis. In my body, man, throughout the week, 
especially going into the game, I had a feeling Indy was going to cover that seven-point spread. I had a feeling that Philly was going to come out flat yet again against this team, and they did. I Indy dominated them for the most part again. And there's two weeks in a row where Philly got dominated in the trenches twice. I ch- I twice after the game over the night against Washington, I said, "Yo, they're gonna mess around," and I almost picked Indy to win this game. I said, "Now I'm checking out the Philly. I'm gonna Philly have it." But yeah, I had a feeling. Oh, the panic meter for the Eagles. You, you feel like the panic meter is, is, is rising up? As, it's definitely it's, rising up. I think it might be at a six to a seven now. I have, say about a six to a seven. It's getting there now. It's starting to. Not, it's not gonna boil you yet, but it's heating up. I will go that far. Depending on how they play next week against Green, against Green Bay next week, we'll talk. That's huge. Week. Yep, that's a huge game. They need to smack, not smack them up. They need, they need to look good. They need to look like they've looked in the first uh, two months. But if anybody who knows football and has common sense will tell you, you do not. You're not supposed to play your best ball in the first two months of the season. Your best ball is supposed to come in December and January. Um, again, the more of the same popping up, there is a huge possibility we're going to find out against Green Bay and then and, and, uh, weeks to come where they might have been figured out by the league. There is a possibility that that happened. And if that's the case, it is their responsibility to shake it up and continue to throw different things at your opponents. Remember, again, this is the NFL. Everybody, believe it or not, believe it or not, everybody's good at their jobs. That's not Nina Penny Hackett. Everybody's good. They know what they're doing for the most part. These players are all good. They are the best fo- They are the best American football players in the world. Do you think that means nothing? It does mean something because there are other leagues, believe it or not, and there are collegiate sports, believe it or not. They are the best football players and some of the best athletes in this planet has to offer. Okay, so that means that everybody is around or as good as you are. So if you are not going to shake things up and you are not going to adjust yourself to what the other teams are doing, then when they figure you out, you're going to look like this and get dominated for the most part. Lucky for you, your quarterback did come to play at the fourth quarter. And lucky for you, the Indianapolis Colts are are a screw up. (laughs) <laughs> so yes, they are. yes so unlike the washington game the coach did not get every single uh you know break their way the way washington did in that monday night game is because let's keep it real washington got everything and then some by god to yeah. beat you guys there's no question about they, that they indy did not get that same treatment and that's why philadelphia led a game winning touchdown drive but it is getting alarming it is. But at least what I like, though, for this game is that Philly wound up um, tightening the run defense at the second half and really limited the Colts' run. Because at first, I think Townsend Taylor, I feel like had like 60 yards or 70 yards of um, running at the first half of the game. But then the second half, they really tightened up. So that's, that's very good to see, that the run defense is there when it has to be. Good. That's very, very good. So... All you got to do is just limit some of the stupid mistakes because there were a lot of mistakes made by the Philly in this game. You know, like, you know, A.G. Brown fumbling, for example, from nothing. You know, stuff like that. Uh, that Stuff like that's happening. And a rare Jonathan T- Taylor fumble to really set up Philly. Well, like, whenever Philly messed up, Indy would basically mess up right back in the second half. That's how kind of how it went. And then Philly took over, uh, really took over that um, last drive and won their game, and good for them. And Jalen Hurts, I thought, played really good at the second half of this game. Uh, but... We watching y'all, man. That, that's what we saying. We 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 watching y'all. The whole country is watching y'all. But hey, but they they eight one nine one. They they uh, nine and one. Nine and one. Hey, none of the none to say about that. Two more games. I don't know why we didn't. Well, I forgot about it. The Browns, you know, getting. I don't know. What, I want to say get annihilated, but they did clearly, cleanly lose to the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. 31 23. It did come down to an onside recover, which the Bills got very easily because you know Cleveland doesn't know how to catch a ball for some reason. But it it went how I thought it was going to go. It was going to be a little bit tight in the first half. Um, 
Browns were up, I believe it was 10 to 3 from majority of the first half until the for Lamont up taking the lead 13 to 10, I believe it was, or 16 to 10. It's 13 to 10, right? 13 to 10. Going into the second half. And then, you know, what like I said, what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen. Josh Allen and company went and whooped their ass in the second and it's for third quarter and the fourth quarter until they let a little bit of it go and um it came down to an onside kick. But I think the Buffalo Bills are fine. They they got it. They'll be yeah. like they're, they're okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying the passing wasn't the way it should have been, but you know they did get some nice runs off of them. Buffalo Bills got a lot of yards, say 350 um <clears throat> seven yards, and the more surprising part, they have 170, 171 yards rushing in this game, which is sensational, especially since that no one really thought that you got uh, those guys had the capabilities of getting 171 yards of rushing. But when you play against the Cleveland Browns, anything's possible. Right. So they will be going against Detroit. On Thanksgiving for the first game, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Cleveland, on the other hand, just continues to die out. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, Sunday night, the Chiefs Chargers. Chargers always find a way. Made us look real stupid, huh? Chargers always find a way to play these guys close, no matter what, and then mess up. It's literally the same outcome every single time. Yeah, it is. Literally, they happened early in the year, uh, week two uh, on Thursday night football was the better game. Oh, they haven't had this season. Yep, they happened last year too. And last, uh, they literally I think it was the no both no both times the Chargers did win the first matchup last year, but it was pretty close to this. And then that Thursday night last year, what was this? Except it took overtime. This again, it's like you said, the same result every single time. This is three games in a row that you lost basically the same way. Travis Kelsey laughing at you. Oh, <laughs> sure. Jesus, Justin Herbert Chargers deserves team, better. Yeah, he does. He, he deserves, was really good in this game. He deserves so much better, man. My, my, listen, Justin Herbert. I I know you're all about loyalty. I know you love me. You want to be a Charger for us? Get out. Get out. I can't stand Brandon Staley. The next, the the first chance you get to get out of there, get out. There are teams like the Jets will love to have you. Uh, no, nah, don't put him. Don't put him in my division. Chill. Just love but that. yes, but if theoretically, objectively, yes. Imagine that <laughs> the Jets will sign Justin Herbert. Like, oh my god! Like, Josh seriously. Adam, you're screwed. Oh my god! Oh, I'm not gonna lie to you. You actually ran about that. He, <laughs> if Justin Herbert did go to the AFC East, yeah, yeah, that would be. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie to you. The Patriots are easily the worst. The worst. The it's worst. not even close. Patriots. I mean, it's almost it's almost true now. The Patriots are easily, easily the worst team in that division. Yeah, if that happens. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just get out. Brandon Staley. <sighs> he he's much better than Daniel Hackett. I think everyone's better than Daniel. Yeah, because we're better than Daniel. Hackett. I, we're, we're better than him. But Brandon Staley, you're probably right now. You're probably a close second. Probably like a close second. I don't understand how you were a defensive guy and you consistently allow people to run up the gut against you guys. How do you allow 163 yards rushing against the Kansas City Chiefs? How? Imagine Clyde Edwards Hilaire got hurt in this game. Yes, but he does suck, so I don't care about him. But 160 yards rushing. Against the Kansas City Chiefs, Isaiah Pacheco with 107 yards. I believe this is his best game of his young career. I believe he's a rookie this year. I just don't understand. Best game. You're a defensive guy, but this shit happens all the time. You get dominated defensively every single time. Why are you there? I feel like the Chargers get run and ran on. They have to one of the worst one of the worst run defenses in the league in the last five years. No matter who the quarterback is, they suck. They're very bad. They I feel like they've been bad at run defenses since 2011. <laughs> like, like come on, like I, they may be just a Chargers thing, but nah, it's 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 absolutely bad, man. It just is. Do you know? Do you want to know a crazy stat that I learned? That over two billion dollars from the transactions from last season from last year. For the entire division, from the whole AFC West, was to try to combat Kansas City. And at the two, how do you waste two billion dollars like that? How do you waste two billion dollars like that? They to, spent all that money trying to compete with the Chiefs, right? We need the Chiefs, and this might be the fastest that the Chiefs locked up the division. Yes. Because even in 2018, the Chargers were only a game behind them the entire run. In 2018, that that fabled Chiefs team that was like the best team, best offense ever, that team that lost in the championship game. I said that 
they the Chargers were behind. They even beat them actually, so they actually had the same record. But Kansas City beat them. I forget why what tiebreakers they had. But this might be the fastest that Mahomes ever locked up his division in his entire in the entire career. I think it. I might be wrong, but this is coming off the top of my head. But he locked it up like that. Awesome. It's done. You, they they they're finished. They got the division. They're chilling. You just show that. And there's so many teams. They spent all. They spent all that resources to get. They asked me two billion dollars. <laughs> two billion dollars. And you still can't beat the Chiefs. You can't beat them. You not know. <laughs> That's no. the equivalent. If, now, this is now the same thing we said to Buffalo if they lose the conference, if they lose the championship game or the playoffs to Kansas City. Anyway, we're gonna say the same thing about you. You put your entire team to lose to the Chiefs. Well, that's never here to them. But the AFC West, disgrace, disgrace. We said this is gonna be the best division in football by by a mile in the AFC East in the NFC East. Two years ago, NFC East was one of, it was by far the dog shit of divisions, and that one of the best divisions in football. The AFC East, they said, oh, there's no competition. No competition. The last place, the last, both both, both sides, the last place team are two games over 500. The last place got, well, six wins? Huh? Right? Six wins. Right? Washington six, and Jets? Six, got wins. six wins. Six wins. Could have picked what I, I I'm very frugal. A lot of times I can be very frugal at times, and if I waste two billion dollars on garb and two million billion guard, and I get enough of my investment, I'm I'm firing everybody. Everybody get fired. Fuck it, screw it. But the Chiefs, they're eight and two now. Eight I believe two. so. I'll tell you right now. I believe they're eight and two now. It is insane, dude. I think they're gonna end yep. up with the number one. They're, two. they're gonna end up with the number one seed. That's what it's looking like at this overall. Rate. I think they're gonna run shot. Yeah, they have it right now the AFC, in, the, in the AFC. The AFC is gonna run through Kansas City more likely, unless they completely blip. Yep, one of those games. It's I don't, the I don't see Chiefs, happening. Dolphins, Titans, Ravens, Bills, Patriots, and Bengals. I, I don't. I don't see Miami Which, going over the number. To be a hundred percent honest with you, this might end up being the final. And the, the Jets missing out. The missing Jets out. just missing out. The Chargers just missing out, which somebody in the show predicted, by the way. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Colts just missing out because they're actually not that far off either. They're like three games behind the seventh seed. So, no, I'm lying two and a half because of the tie. So, um, this might be a Chiefs, Dolphins, Titans, Ravens. That's the, the Ravens. Those are the division winners. Then Bills, Patriots, and Bengals. I, the only thing I would change there is I will switch Bills and Dolphins. And uh, that that's basically it. I would just switch Bills and, and Dolphins. Bills will win the division. Dolphins will be just edge out a wild card spot for the fifth seed. Yeah, and then maybe maybe Bengals go up six seed and bring in a seven seed. Whatever, right. that make no difference to me. But whatever. But yeah, that like this sounds about right. What about the NFC? Just to be doing it. All right, Eagles, Vikings, Seahawks, Buccaneers, Cowboys, Giants, 49ers. I think the Seahawks. Maybe the Seahawks four to seven, and the 49ers catch up to them. Maybe. Yeah, Forty Niners is only a half a game behind because they already beat Seattle. Yeah, so I think. But they play again soon, though. I think the Forty Niners take 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 the division. The Seattle this makes the playoffs. Yeah, I would switch Forty Niners and Seattle too. But Seattle, I think, will be a six or fifth seed, depending on what happens with the NFC East. The Giants, like you said, is kind of I don't know about them right now. If they, you know finish, what I mean? if they finish. They're seventy three now. The way how their division is right now, they probably win two more games after this, and if they're nine and eight, I think there'll be enough. To that's worst case scenario. Win, though. That's worst case scenario. Yeah, they 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 will have two more games, and they go nine and eight, and they barely make the playoffs, which yeah. they probably will. I don't know. We'll, they, they I think Washington has something to say about but then, that. Yeah, yeah, Washington has something uh, to say about that. Yeah. yeah, they're six and five, and they're out right now. Which is weird because 49ers is five and four, but whatever. Um well, Atlanta's not too far behind either. So yeah, watch Atlanta too, that's yeah. it though. That's it, yeah. For now. Unless like somebody's gonna rise up and just come out the grave and do some insane stuff. Yeah. But 49ers play tonight. So we'll see what happens in that game. But they're six and four then. But uh, everything looks fine, but I'm talking all this crap, right? We still have like how many games left? Seven? Seven left. 
anything can happen. Literally. For all we know, Eagles fall out and Cowboys are the freaking number one seed in the NFC. That could happen. That's that, their only a game. No, behind, that a game two game could happen, and they have tie, a tiebreaker over the Vikings, which that was. They they both do actually. So Minnesota it might be screwed I mean, for the first seed. For this first seed. Yeah, it's a possibility. Both the Eagles and that and the Cowboys have tiebreakers over them right now. You know, you know, you know what the team knows talking about Tampa. Tampa's quietly at the four C. They're, They're the four C, five and five, five hundred right, right now. Quiet right now. Single Brady, bro. I don't know, man. Single Brady. I'm like, why do you? And he's probably gonna probably gonna play angry. Uh, oh, my, oh my god! And we, not just, we're we're Patriot fans. We've seen him play angry out of his mind. Yeah, That's the Patriots have rings because of that. That's scary. That's Atlanta. That is scary. So okay. yeah, I think we're fine. We're good. Um, this can't this. Kansas City. Kansas City. <laughs> Good job. I love being right. That being said, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um, join the Facebook group. Um, the picks, the pickums will be done. I'm probably going to um, have the results by Tuesday morning or Tuesday night the latest. That's not important. Important is yes. the pickles for this week. How does yes. it gonna work? No, I'm not talking about, yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, how's it work for this week? What I'm going to do is I'm going to post the week 11, the week 12 pickums. Today, Monday on Monday, around when I was food fan, I'm posted. So you have like I said, you have enough time to have pick the games. The deadline for that picking sheet will be I'm gonna say eleven thirty Eastern time in the morning. Eleven on that, Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay. I'm gonna say half an hour before the game starts. Eleven thirty. But I'm gonna post it now on Monday so you have more than enough time to pick the games. Because yeah, so I'm going to put that on right now. All right, nice, my thumb. There you go. Awesome. That being said, peace, love, apple sauce. Um, have a happy holiday. We'll, we'll see you guys before the holidays. Yes, so we will. But yes, we'll see you guys soon. Stay warm, by the way. This is mad cold. If you're in the East Coast, definitely. Yeah, mad cold. In the West Coast. Right? <laughs> peace out, guys.